Hey everyone, in this lesson we're going to talk about the hedgehog signaling pathway in vertebrates. Now in a previous lesson we talked about this pathway in invertebrates, but in this lesson we're going to talk about the uh, vertebrate pathway and we're going to talk about the differences between vertebrates and invertebrates um, with regards to the hedgehog signaling pathway. So to begin, the hedgehog signaling pathway in vertebrates is involved in embryological development just like it was or just like it is in hedgehog signaling in invertebrates. And in, in, in vertebrates, hedgehog signaling is involved in controls, development, patterning, tissue growth, and mitogenesis, specifically of the cerebellum and retina. And it also controls homeostasis and tissue repair of adult neural stem cells. And it has other functions in axon guidance and other roles as well. Now we mentioned a couple concepts in the invertebrate hedgehog signaling video. One of those concepts was graded signaling. And that means that different gradients of hedgehog protein induce different subsets of genes. Uh, so that means that g certain genes are activated at certain thresh thresholds of hedgehog protein. And that really relates to different concentrations of hedgehog protein that are exposed to a cell lead to different levels of intracellular signaling and then the cell can detect that different level of intracellular signaling to activate certain genes in response. And the other concept was this idea of organ tissue specific gene induction, which means that hedgehog proteins induce different genes in different organs and tissue. So if it's in the arms as opposed to the brain, there's different genes that are activated. So all of this sounds extremely familiar um, to what we've learned already in invertebrates. So what are some of the differences? What are some of the differences between vertebrate and invertebrate hedgehog signaling? Well, in vertebrates, hedgehog signaling occurs uh, in a primary cilium of the cell. Secondly, we've talked about C proteins in invertebrates, but these C proteins are actually known as glee proteins in vertebrates. And these glee proteins uh, within vertebrate animals are more specialized, so uh, for example, GLEE2 is uh, more utilized as an activator uh, or a transcriptional activator, and GLEE3 is usually more utilized as a repressor of transcriptional uh, activity. So again, the hedgehog signaling pathway in vertebrates occurs within a primary cilium. So that means that this primary cilium has microtubules associated with it, there is also another protein known as GPR-161, and we've talked about patched before. Patched is also involved in vertebrate hedgehog signaling, and smoothened is also involved in vertebrate uh, hedgehog signaling. So smoothened is located within, uh, with usually within an endosome within the cell. So when there's no hedgehog proteins present, the hedgehog signaling pathway is considered inactivated. And when it's in, inactivated, patched inhibits smoothened. And one, when smoothened is inhibited, it cannot enter into the plasma membrane, which means that smoothened resides in the cytosol, usually within an endosome. Also, when this pathway is inactivated, Glee proteins like Glee2 and Glee3 are associated with SUFU protein. We've talked about this protein in the invertebrate hedgehog signaling lesson. And when inactivated, proteins CKI, protein kinase A, and glycogen synthase kinase 3 beta or GSK3 beta all phosphorylate GLEE proteins. And when these GLEE proteins are phosphorylated, they are processed by the proteasome and they're actually cleaved into a truncated version of themselves. So GLEE2 gets actually truncated or chopped into a smaller piece, GLEE2R, and GLEE3 gets truncated into GLEE3R. Uh, these are the repressor forms of these proteins. These GLEE2R and GLEE3R proteins, these repressor proteins, can then translocate into the nucleus where they can inhibit transcriptional activation of hedgehog-mediated genes. When this pathway is activated, when there are hedgehog proteins present, such as sonic hedgehog or SHH, hedgehog proteins like sonic hedgehog can bind and inhibit
patched. And the binding of Sonic Hedgehog to patched is facilitated and promoted by proteins such as CDO, brother of CDO or BOC, GAS1, and LRP2. So these other proteins, CDO, BOC, GAS1, and LRP2, all promote and facilitate the binding of Sonic Hedgehog to patched in order to, for Hedgehog to inhibit patched. So once patch is inhibited, patch can no longer inhibit smoothened. And in fact, when Sonic Hedgehog binds to patched, G both GPR161 and patch will actually leave the membrane of the primary psyllium and be degraded within a proteasome inside the cell. Without patched, smoothened is no longer inhibited. And smoothened will be phosphorylated by both CKI and GPRK2. When smoothened has been phosphorylated by both GPRK2 and CKI, with the help of microtubule motor KIF3A and beta arrestin, Smoothen can then enter into the plasma membrane of the primary cilium. And it enters into areas of the primary cilium membrane in close association with another protein known as EVC. When smoothened is within the membrane of the primary cilium, KIF7 aids in the movement of both GLE proteins and SUFU proteins through the primary cilium. And at this point, GLE proteins disassociate from SUFU, so they no longer bind to each other. So when GLE proteins are not associated with SUFU proteins, and when the GLE proteins are within the primary cilium, they are not phosphorylated by those protein kinases we mentioned earlier, which means that the GLE proteins are not phosphorylated, and which means that they are not processed by the proteasome, and they can remain in their full form. So as opposed to the repressor forms, GLE2R and GLE3R, the GLE proteins are now in their full form, GLE2 and GLE3, which means that in their full form, GLE2 and GLE3 can then translocate and enter into the nucleus where they can bind to the DNA and induce the expression of GLE target genes. And these GLE target genes are responsible for development patterning and differentiation and some of those other uh, roles that we mentioned earlier, like homeostasis as well. So again, when the hedgehog signaling pathway is inactivated, GLE proteins are proteolytically cleaved to their GLE R forms, and those GLE R forms can enter the nucleus and inhibit transcriptional activation. But when the hedgehog pathway is activated, when there are hedgehog proteins present, the GLE proteins are not proteolytically processed into their R form, and they remain in their normal full forms and they can then enter the nucleus and activate GLE target genes. So that is the difference between the inactivated and activated uh, hedgehog signaling in vertebrates. Anyways guys, that was a lesson on hedgehog signaling in vertebrates. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please like and subscribe for more videos like this one. And as always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.